In this video, we'll look at a piece of vintage test equipment, the Heathkit TS3 TV alignment generator. First, a little background about signal generators and sweep generators. Signal generators are electronic devices that generate repeating or non-repeating electronic signals and are used in designing, testing, troubleshooting, and repairing electronic devices. An audio frequency signal generator is a piece of test equipment that produces electronic waveforms at audio frequencies, roughly speaking from 20 to 20,000 hertz or cycles per second. They find use in testing and troubleshooting of various types of electronic equipment, including radio and audio amplifiers. Radio frequency or RF signal generators are capable of producing frequencies in the range used for radio. RF signal generators are used for servicing and aligning radio and television receivers. They often provide a facility to modulate the RF signal with an audio tone so that it can be heard on a radio receiver. Sweep and alignment generators produce signals that sweep or change frequency at a specific rate and are useful for testing and adjustment of devices that use frequency modulation such as FM radio and television receivers and for adjusting tune circuits that need to have a particular response over a range of frequencies. The output is often displayed using an oscilloscope. A marker generator can produce signals that have visible marks at specific frequencies that can be observed on an oscilloscope. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. Heathkit produced many models of signal generators of different types. They produced a number of sweep generators starting with the TS-1 in 1950. The TS-3 is a sweep and marker generator offered in kit form from 1953 to 1954. It was the successor to the TS-1 and TS-2 models and was followed by the TS-4. A 1953 Heathkit catalog lists it at a price of $44.50. A sweep marker generator is used for television alignment and testing. Television sets of that era had different tune circuits that needed to be adjusted for bandwidth and proper frequency response curve shape. The basic technique is to inject a signal that changes or sweeps in frequency and observe the behavior in the circuit using an oscilloscope. What is displayed is a graph of gain on the vertical axis versus frequency response on the horizontal axis. The generator can also produce markers, which are small vertical bars, or pips, that show up on the oscilloscope trace to mark a particular frequency. These allow one to check that the response at a specific frequency is correct. The TS3 supports fixed, variable, and external markers. Fixed markers are at a frequency determined by a crystal plugged into a front panel socket. Variable markers appear at a frequency set by the marker dial or one of its harmonics. An external marker can be produced by the input from an external signal generator. The feature known as blanking eliminates the return trace when the oscillator returns to the starting frequency. Without this, a double trace would be present on the oscilloscope, which would make the trace difficult to interpret. Specialized sweep marker generators like this were standard tools used for television servicing. This was still in the era of black and white television. Color TV added more requirements for test equipment. The TS-3 was one of a succession of TS models that had short lifetimes of just a few years each. This reflected the fact that television technology and techniques for TV servicing were changing rapidly at the time, and television servicing equipment was continuously evolving. Let's briefly run through the front panel controls and connectors. The band switch selects one of four frequency bands. Band A is 4 to 12 megahertz, band B is 13 to 34 megahertz, band C is 28 to 68 megahertz, including VHF television channels 2 through 4, and band D is 75 to 200 megahertz, including television channels 5 through 13 and the FM radio band. 
Note that this unit predates the introduction of the UHF television channels 14 and up and therefore does not support them. The marker control sets the position of a variable marker from 19 to 60 megahertz, 57 to 180 megahertz using harmonics. The crystal pins are a crystal socket for a fixed marker with a 4.5 megahertz crystal included. The unit can also accept an external marker signal using the EXT mark connector. The marker amp control sets the level of the variable marker or can turn it off. Sweep width controls the amount of deviation of the sweep oscillator from 0 to 12 megahertz. Horizontal phase compensates for phase shift in the unit under test. The horizontal and ground banana jacks typically go to the x-axis horizontal input of an oscilloscope. The RF out connector goes to the circuit under test. Output level is set by a coarse attenuator switch that has times 1, times 100, and times 10k positions as well as the fine attenuator control. Here's a look inside the unit. It was quite a complex kit to assemble with seven vacuum tubes and lots of point-to-point -point wiring. There are 20 pages of assembly instructions in the manual. The following tubes were used. A 12AT7 sweep oscillator and buffer. A 12AT7 for variable and crystal marker oscillator. 12AU7 blanking clipper. 6AQ5 the series high voltage regulator. A 6AU6 for the regulator control. 0A2 control tube reference regulator and a 6X5 rectifier. The sweep oscillator uses a device called an increductor controllable inductor which varies its inductance with the current flowing through it. Some sweep generators of this era instead used mechanical systems which were complex, noisy, less reliable and more expensive. The power supply circuit uses a selenium rectifier this is an early type of solid state rectifier that's not particularly reliable. They're sometimes known to fail spectacularly with a, shall we say, distinctive smell. Opinion varies on whether to replace them or leave them as is, if they appear to be working okay. In general, I would suggest to leave the rectifiers in place, except for devices that you plan to use on a daily basis for long periods of time. In that case, consider replacing it with one or more modern rectifier diodes, but depending on the circuit, you may need to account for the different voltage drop of a modern silicon diode. Alignment of the unit requires a VTVM or similar multimeter to adjust the calibration control to a known DC voltage. It also uses the 4.5 MHz crystal oscillator to adjust the sweep oscillator. This requires a signal tracer or oscilloscope with a demodulator probe. Television servicing applications for the TS3 include sound and adjacent channel trap alignment, IF alignment, sound IF alignment, and oscillator and RF alignment. It can also be used to align FM radio receivers. The manual suggests is a full set of Heathkit instruments for television servicing, the TS3, an oscilloscope such as the O9 with suitable probes, a VTVM such as the V6, and optionally a grid dip meter like the GD1B. A bar generator like the BG1 is also recommended. The basic idea of a sweep generator is an oscillator that sweeps through a range of frequencies. You can control the upper sweep frequency and the range of the sweep. The output goes to a tune circuit under test and ultimately to the vertical channel of an oscilloscope, often through an RF detector probe which converts the amplitude of the signal to a DC level. A 60 Hz signal corresponds to the sweep rate and goes to an oscilloscope horizontal channel in XY mode. Output is enabled during the time the scope trace moves from left to right. Output is disabled during the retrace time when the trace moves back to the left. The result is an indication of output versus frequency, just like a graph of frequency response. Here we can see the sweep output going directly to the oscilloscope. It's an RF signal that varies in frequency and turns off during the retrace period. I've now hooked it up with the oscilloscope in XY mode and the sweep signal going through a tune circuit. I'm using an RF probe 
a simple diode detector and filter ahead of the oscilloscope that converts the signal amplitude to a DC level. I've adjusted the scope for a nicely centered display. We need to adjust the phasing control for a proper display. We can see the response of the tune circuit on the scope. Changing the sweep width changes the range of frequencies being displayed. If we vary the tune circuit inductance, we can see a change in the location of the peak. A marker is a signal as specific frequency or frequencies that is superimposed on the output and shows up as a pip on the trace. With the TS3, we have three possible markers. A variable marker from 19 to 60 megahertz. A crystal controlled marker using the supplied 4.5 megahertz crystal or another crystal. Or an external marker provided by an external source like a signal generator into the EXT marker input. The markers also show up on harmonics. 4.5 MHz was chosen for the supplied crystal because television signals have a 4.5 MHz bandwidth. Turning on the marker, we can see the 4.5 MHz signal on the sweep. If we change the sweep frequency or width, the location of the marker changes. The variable marker is not shown because it's much higher than the frequency I'm using here. I purchased this particular unit on eBay in 2006. One of the risks of buying larger equipment like this on eBay is the possibility of damage in shipping. Unfortunately, this was one of the few cases I had where I was unlucky and there was damage. A knob was broken, some jacks and some of the front panel were bent, and some parts were loose inside the unit. I was able to repair the damage, although the case still has some of the paint missing. A number of modifications had been made to the unit by a previous owner. A filter choke had been added to the power supply. This is what came loose inside during shipping. The original 6X5 rectifier tube was replaced with a 5Y3GT, and the circuit rewired accordingly. The power transformer was replaced. The new one has a 5 volt filament winding needed by the 5Y3GT tube. If I had to guess, I would theorize that at some time the original 6X5 rectifier tube shorted and overheated the transformer. The 6X5 tubes were known to do this, and there was evidence, black marks on the chassis, that could have been caused by the transformer burning. I think the owner then rewired it with a 5Y3GT tube, which are less prone to shorting, and a new transformer, and added a filter choke. Other modifications included a hole drilled in the front panel to get at the inductor for the marker oscillator, presumably for calibrating it without opening the case. The RF out jack was changed from the original microphone type to a more modern BNC connector. Two additional jacks were also added. The circuit had been modified so that the marker output came out separately to a BNC jack rather than being mixed with the sweep output. A second jack duplicated the RF out, presumably so that a jumper cable between the jacks would add the marker output to the sweep output when this was desired. Finally, it was missing the handle on the top of the case. These were sometimes removed and subsequently lost so that other equipment could be stacked on top. The unit received a thorough going over including cleaning and replacing some parts. The end result is that it is not too bad shaped cosmetically and it works electrically. My intention was to use it for restoring some old 1940s or 1950s era televisions and I hope to do so in the future. It's also useful for FM radio alignment and looking at tune circuits in amateur radio equipment. As a straight signal generator, it's less useful since the range of output frequencies are limited to 4 MHz and above. 
The unit didn't come with the two signal cables. These can be made easily. They're just some coax with some resistors and caps terminating them. The unit did come with an original manual. Here's a mystery. My TS3 came with an original manual dated 1956. Inside is the large fold-out schematic that Heathkit included. But wait, the schematic is for the TS4 model. Somewhere along the line, the schematic for a different unit was tucked into the manual for this one. Possibly it was used in a business or school that had several units around and they were mixed up. I guess we'll never know. My new book, Classic Heathkit Electronic Test Equipment, covers Heathkit's test equipment products starting with a brief history of Heathkit, an overview of the test equipment product lines, and tips on buying and restoring vintage test equipment from sources like eBay. Separate chapters cover the major categories of component testers and substitution boxes, frequency counters, meters, oscilloscopes, power supplies, signal generators, tube testers and checkers, and miscellaneous test equipment. Each chapter includes one or more in-depth sections that look at a representative model from my Heathkit collection covering its features, operation, and notable quirks or trivia. The appendix provides a list of references and resources including books, websites, and suppliers of parts, manuals, and related products and services, as well as a detailed product listing of every known model of test equipment produced by Heathkit. The book is available from lulu.com and Amazon and retails for US $19.95. The TS3 is a good example of the type of sweep generator that was used for servicing black and white televisions in the 1950s. This type of equipment is now obsolete for a number of reasons. Modern TVs typically no longer require alignment. The circuitry is fixed and or aligns itself. Furthermore, analog television broadcasting using the NTSC standard has been phased out in most of North America and replaced by digital television, although most televisions still accept an analog input. In a future video, I'll look at a more modern sweep generator, the Heathkit IG57A. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit radios and test equipment.